Welcome back to my channel where I go ahead and actually tell you my verdicts up front, let you know what my suggestions are for new streaming content on the streaming platforms. And then I hope that you stay tuned to go ahead and actually see why I gave it those recommendations. So today I'm going to go ahead and actually review Tubi's Eric Coker's Good Poison. So for this, I actually has a drama and I need to go ahead and actually let you know that if you're a main target audience member, or if you're into drama, things that are charged as far as different things for black men tales for tales that actually include a lot of various different types of abuse and situations or what have you if you're really into those types of stories and tellings or what have you i'm going to go ahead and actually suggest that you watch the first two episodes of this series however if you're a casual viewer you're not really into that type of thing on there you really don't identify with those stories you don't have the empathy for those i still think it'll be a good idea to go and watch at least the first episode of this series so those are my recommendations. Now stay tuned on how I came up with those recommendations. Who are the other two guys who assaulted Logan? It was a mistake. It was a mistake. It was a hate. Eric Coker's Good Poison actually premiered on Tubi in June of 2023. It has eight episodes that are about 35 minutes apiece. And it stars Eric Coker, Marcos Hobson, and Maxwell Neal. Now, IMDb has the synopsis this way. Good Poison, an anthology series by Eric Coker, ventures into the depths of black male sexuality, unraveling the nuances of sexual identity and striving to spark thoughtful conversations and offer new perspectives on this captivating theme. Now, from my perspective, I will just go and actually let you know that doing an anthology drama series is always risky. The reason being is that Inherently in drama, you need to go and actually build up characters. You need time to go ahead and actually let the stories be told so that we can go and actually find empathy. We understand what the characters' motivations are and tell a story that we can really go ahead and actually sink our teeth into. So it's a little bit risky. It's different than like other anthology series like say Tales from the Crypt or uh, Twilight Zone where you can kind of tell those and break them up and, and, and do all kinds of different things in a very short amount of time. Even comedy anthology is, is pretty decent, okay. But when you're going ahead and actually doing that type of stuff on there is risky. And then if I'm going to go and actually be honest, I myself don't have a lot of worldly understanding in regards to uh, gay males and their struggles and the things that they go and actually go through. So because I'm not a fan of a drama anthology series and not really going and actually on board with really understanding all the plights that a gay men struggle with, I'm going to go and actually consider myself a casual viewer. The reason why I go ahead and actually think it's important for you to go ahead and actually know the perspective of your various different viewers because everybody carries their own opinions, so you need to know where I'm coming from. And for this particular series, as I said, it was released in June of 2023, so that means that some of y'all might go ahead and actually consider this part of my Varnell Hill series. What does that mean? That means this series asks That's right. Did you miss it? You might have actually missed this series. And I'm going to go and actually give you the opportunity to go ahead and actually give some insight. See if you like it. If you like how that sounds, do me a favor. Click like, share, subscribe. And now let's get into the review. So after watching the first two episodes of Good Poison, I'm going to go ahead and actually say this series really reminds me of uh, other anthology series that have, I've seen other stories for, like For Colored Girls or If These Walls Can Talk. And those are anthology drama, really heavy types of series and things like that. And so I really kind of compare it to those uh, those types of anthology series. So giving you a little bit more on what I actually saw and observed in these first two episodes. The first first episode, again, these are anthology series that are self-contained on there. First one was called Trigger. Trigger, I enunciated, so you know exactly what I'm saying here. So for that particular episode, um, I thought it was a very awkward setup. And overall, the 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 story in trigger was very awkward there are some very awkward scenes on there how we go and actually transition to some things or whatever wasn't always the smoothest or we weren't really explaining a lot of things on there so that was the first thing that kind of stuck out to me there was a scene that happens after an initial uh conference that happens that was very real i really could relate to that i understood it and it was actually very well delivered and performed stop open the fucking door i'm not playing with you bristol the other thing that I will go and actually say about this, compared to like a lot of uh, 2B series, this series actually makes a very good work as far as like camera and audio work. Um, not always the best, but it was actually a step up from some other ones that I've seen, especially like the establishing shots, like things that are setting up to like going to various different niche, um, 
destinations going to various different locations what have you the establishing shots i think were actually very well done really like that in this first episode the aspect of really getting the story right and timing right was a little bit um all over the place for me in this first episode and it had a very awkward ending that just kind of left you like huh you know whether you liked it or you didn't like the story or whatever the ending just kind of fell flat so that's kind of how i feel for the first episode second episode called savior this one again another awkward meeting uh, awkward awkward start to it and just kind of there's no organic aspect to it or anything like that it's just kind of into it at least this one makes a little bit more sense but then again it's it's a little out there it it also tended to go and actually linger on some scenes a little bit long as far as like you know seeing somebody react to something and then staying there the camera staying with them or what have you there was just some like odd camera work there for for that aspect of it there uh, definitely was some stories some big life-changing aspects that happened in the episode that just kind of felt rushed and and things like that but i will say in the second episode here that actually had a very well um time or very well told cliffhanger that happened there so i'll give it kudos for ending on a better note than the first episode so those are kind of my thoughts and processes and things like that on those first two episodes so overall for this series for the storytelling um, I kind of feel two ways about the stories. On one hand, I understand the depth of the stories and the complexities of what they're trying to tell. Um, obviously, uh, black gay men are discriminated not only in the outside, just everyday world, but also within their own communities and their own families. And so there's a lot that they struggle with, as well as the system, whether you're talking about prison system, whether you're talking about uh, adoptions, or you're talking about uh, families, churches, things like that. There's a lot that goes ahead and actually really discriminates these types of men and so these stories do need to be told and i think they had a good idea and premise for putting it out there however the way that this particular series put things out there and, and telling these stories i feel like there was just some bad writing on how to go and actually tell the stories the most of the times you felt it was rushed and I think that's probably the biggest faux pas in this whole entire thing. There's plot holes and there's rush aspects of things, maybe because of budgetary constraints, maybe because of timing, whatever. But I feel like each of these stories probably should be somewhere between 15 to 20 minutes longer in each episode and give time to breathe, to get a more organic aspect to the time, uh, the uh, events that are going to go and actually happen, build in some bridges there so that I can go and actually make sense of the story and why we're doing what we're doing. And I think this suffers from just very condensed uh script and and timing or what have you and it really makes the story suffer overall and there's um, honestly there's sometimes when the dialogue in and of itself is kind of eye rolling what have you and it just it, it kind of falls flat sometimes so for the storytelling for this particular series i'm going to give it a c minus in regards to the acting the acting is up and down it's a roller coaster it's all over the place there are sometimes it was because the acting was bad because the dialogue was bad it's like you couldn't even get the best actor out there to go ahead and actually say these lines convincingly or whatever but there's other times where the dialogue was actually decent and there and was actually uh, pretty good or what have you but it was delivered so flat or it just doesn't have enough emotion behind it that you just really felt like uh now there are scenes there are a couple of scenes in both episodes that you could go ahead and actually be like ah see that i would love for the whole entire episode to be that way but then they kind of dropped the ball for the rest of them so there's probably a little bit dealing there with the direction and not really giving giving bringing out the the emotions and things like that delivery to some of the actors some of the actors are just not giving it or whatever but overall the acting is just it's it's a little bit subpar for me so i'm going to go ahead and actually say the acting is going to be roughly like a c minus for me the intangibles things that you can't quite quantify in this particular series or what have you obviously things like being able to handle uh pda from gay men a lot of straight men can't do that a lot of people in general can't really handle that but i will say a lot of a lot of folks in and of themselves just can't handle uh pda and there are going to be some sexual scenes in this particular uh series uh being able to deal with heavy topics and i'll go ahead and actually just list them here because the algorithm allegedly will go ahead and actually flag my video for saying these particular words but if i go and actually list them here for you you'll kind of you'll know exactly uh what these are but these are topics that are very difficult for people to deal with as a whole and thusly it's it's not for everybody but it's an intangible that you need to understand dealing with that there's also strong derogatory terminology whether you're talking about black man 
black people in general, um, gay men, derogatory terms that are used here that you have to go and actually be mentally prepared to listen to and hear in order to be able to watch this series. So I go ahead and actually warn that of you. You got to go ahead and actually have an open mind when dealing with everything because obviously you're dealing with a lot of various different uh, walks of life, experiences, what have you. You got to be with that open mind on that. However, overall, for the intangible aspect of it, I'm going to go ahead and actually say when you're watching the average Tubi series, you kind of feel like, you know, there's a lack of care to production. I think there was a lot of care added to here. Most notably, I will say that the actors do seem that they really want to go ahead and actually do well in this. The cinematography was actually pretty good for, you know, what the budget constraints are. I think that the editing was solid, not great, but solid. And I think that they were trying to go ahead and actually make a high level production in a typical Tubi series. So those are some intangible things that I want to go and actually throw out there. And I would say for the intangibles, what that does is kind of elevates a little bit. And it'll, I go and actually get like the intangibles roughly like a C plus as far as what they do to kind of elevate the series a little bit. But with that being said, getting back to my verdicts on there for main target audiences, people that are really into stories about gay men or specifically gay black men, or just if you're empathetic to those types of victim stories and things of that nature, I'm going to go and actually say watch the first two episodes because they have some good individual scenes. Both episodes have good individual scenes. They may not have been great as a whole, but there's good stories here to go ahead and actually say. I'll go ahead and actually really go ahead and actually see if the stories speak to you enough that some of the underwhelming performances of themselves will go ahead and actually the stories may go and actually overshadow some of the underwhelming performances on here because I think there's some good stories here to tell. And I think two episodes is a fair determination for you to make that. For casual viewers, the reason why I say go and actually give it one is because even though the production was okay, maybe the uh, execution was a little subpar, things like that, I think it's important to go ahead and actually at least watch at least one of these episodes to go ahead and actually see, understand some of the stories, the plights that go on on there, especially if you're not in this walk of life, if you're not black or you're not a uh, gay man or anything like that. Watch at least one of these episodes, and I think you're going to come away with a better understanding on that. And the good thing is that that first episode, while there's definitely it has its faults and things of that nature, there are a couple of good scenes in there, a couple of things that are delivered very well that will go ahead and actually really resonate with someone who really has an open mind. So that's what I have. Mains, watch two episodes. Casuals, watch one episode. And that's what I have for Eric Coker's Good Poison, now showing on Tubi. Give it a watch. If you stay for this entire review, I appreciate you. I really do. Do me a favor. Click, like, share, subscribe, all that kind of good stuff. Still trying to be regular for you to go and actually give you these same reviews on there, um, especially these ones where these are shows that are very rarely seen. They, didn't get, they don't get a whole, whole lot of opportunity, so I'm hoping to bring that audience in. But until the next time, I'll highlight you. Take care of yourself.